Hi, we're Local Astoria, and we're at the Egg Hill Church. We're here to talk to Vonnie Henninger today, who's played a huge role in keeping this church alive. Come check it out. The original church was evangelical. Um, it was uh, Jacob Albright, who was preaching before 1800. In 1968, the Methodist and Evangelical United Brethren joined together and formed the Methodist United Church. In 1860, one of the things that they did was they built the 1860 church on the 1838 foundation. But after 1860, um, of course, they were here till 1927. In 1947, they put a new roof on the building. And then in 1970, apparently the steeple had uh, come in disrepair. And so they removed the top part of the steeple. So the base of the, of the steeple still is on the church. However, the top part is missing. As time went on, the building uh, really deteriorated. Uh, there was vandalism, and I think through some of that vandalism and, and so on, they wound up with uh, the ceiling having problems, and, and the plaster on the walls was having problems, and so on. And in the 1970s, it was really uh, in much need of repair. So the trustees of the church uh, decided to sell it, and they had a sale date that they were gonna have a public auction. And whoever bought the church was going to have to, to raise the church. They, they wanted it taken down. Well, fortunately, at that point, some people in the area here at Egg Hill found out about it and uh, decided that they would start a conservancy. So they formed the Egg Hill Conservancy and came in here and started doing repairs. And from what I can tell, they had, a, they had spent something like $8,000 to clean up the church and to do some repairs inside. Although even at that point, the foundation had a problem. You will notice here, these, uh, the stone wall right here in the front, uh, that had completely, uh, was just deteriorated down to falling into the basement of the uh, church. And this side, you could see where there was a three inch sag in the middle of the church. All the old boards and everything just as they had been, but also to change and block the church up so that uh, that we could get the sag out of it, and and uh, they did, and now the door opens on the front of the church without any problem. <laughs> the conservancy started in 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 '79, and and that's when they did the um, putting it on the National Register of okay. Historic Buildings, and. Uh, Lynn Miller, who lived in this area, was a State College architect, and he was president of the Conservancy, okay. and uh, so was quite involved in seeing that some of this got taken care of. You had mentioned there was a story when they were camping, there were so many people here, they were camping in tents, you know, back before they had a church building, maybe. Well, it, they had a, a camp meeting, Yeah. and, and the, um, this would have been two years after the log church was built. Okay. And so the people in the community come here and, and they're having this tent meeting and, and a tornado strikes. And when it hits the ground, it splits and it completely goes around the people and nobody got injured. The people can hear the trees splitting and the, the terrible storm around them, but nobody was hurt and everybody was on their knees praying. All the damage and everything, and these people were right here and the storm went around them. 
It's a real story, isn't it? It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, I started coming to the homecoming service in, in 2017, and I noticed that the foundation was in very bad shape. I, I talked with uh, Babe Whelan, who was a caretaker, and, and uh, he had no objections to my pursuing doing something about it. I talked to uh, some of the neighbors around here, and yes, they were in favor of seeing something done about it. And so I uh, also met with LaDawn Young, and she was president of the Penns Valley Area Historical Museum. And uh, yes, she was anxious to see us do something about it because the church has a lot of history and it's very much loved by the community. Well, the burial ground is taken care of by a cemetery association and they keep the grass mowed. And, and um, there was a person buried here in the last few years and I understand that's gonna be the last person to be buried in the cemetery. And uh, I think there's, well, yes, this uh, grave here is also a, is a veteran. Mm -hmm. And we have another veteran back here. Okay. Yeah, this is the Revolutionary War veteran. Yes, Let's yes, see. yes. This is Daniel Wagner, and uh, he was uh, Revolutionary War. And I noticed the death date on there is 1838. So that would have been the year that the church was built. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah, how about that? And, and Daniel was a farmer, lived out here uh, about a half a mile. And he, a beautiful log home that has been restored is where he lived. People were so in favor of having something done with the church. And we were able to raise over $30,000 in private donations in 18 months. I tried to keep it in the news so that people would know that what we were doing and I also uh, kept posting pictures online so that people could see what, what needed to be done and what we had planned to do. And, and when the work was being done, I, I again posted pictures daily of the work that was being done so that they could see how their money was being spent to, take, to fix up the church. So you so you said um, you can really I mean you can really see the new the new foundation and it looks good and you have the the ramp and everything. And oh yes, the ramp and uh, we also made a handicap accessible, which was very important that we do that. Yeah, and over here, did you say they went to Sunday school down here? They did. Uh, the Ooh. children. There's a Sunday school room in the basement here. Uh -huh. So this is where they had their Sunday school. They'd walk yes. around and they'd come yes. in here. And come you can, in here. Yes. And you can see the wall, the new wall foundation. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. You want to take a peek? There's a lot of other work that needs to be done around here. Uh, it would be wonderful if we could have some Eagle Scout projects here. Uh, you know, there's something ought to be done about the shutters. Uh, and and j we could divide it up into smaller uh, projects that Eagle Scouts could do and so on if they were interested in helping to preserve the church. So, Bonnie, why is it important that we preserve sites like the church? Well, it is a community spot that everybody loves dearly and you know if, if you don't preserve it i can just hear people now down the road saying you know we should have done something about it with uh, preserving the foundation on this church um hopefully some others will step up and maybe do some of the other things that need to be done so that we can continue to keep this a place that we can always feel good about and we've, we've enjoyed um, seeing it today with you. We've learned so much, and thank you so much for your time and um, sharing your knowledge. And that's a big part of preserving too. Is sharing, you're sharing the history with with uh, with us all. So thank you so much. Thank you for what you do as well, because it's only people like you that bring this out that other people get to enjoy what we have in our own community that's so important, and that's our history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.